Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are looking at Woodworth Field at the Kalamazoo College Athletic Field Complex for this afternoon's MIAA Baseball Doubleheader featuring the Trine Thunder and the home team, the Kalamazoo College Hornets. Good afternoon again. My name is Zach Metz. Next to me is Dawson Scoopin. Scoop, it's great to have you back. Another home game at the Wood. Uh, what do you think Kalamazoo's got to do to, to put together uh, a win today, try and build towards a sweep against Trine? Well, thanks for having me again, Matt. Uh, I think it starts on the mound today with uh, Robert Algreen. I mean, need to have a good outing from him and get the pitching going. And then as well, on the offensive side of things, the bats ha have got to stay consistent. You know, they've been a little bit shaky this year, have some big games, and then have some really, really rough games. So if they stay consistent, then I think they'll, they'll be solid here today. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. First up for Trine, leading off, playing shortstop number five, Luke Burford. Batting second, the center fielder, number 26, Daniel Rumberger. Batting third, the first baseman, number 11, Dalton Nykirk. Batting fourth, the third baseman, number 19, Joel Walton. Batting fifth, the catcher, number 29, Nathan Gilmet. Batting sixth, the left fielder, number four, Cole Temple. Batting seventh, the right fielder, number 16, Brody Bond. Batting eighth, the designated hitter, number two, Easton Rhodes. Batting ninth, the second baseman, number nine, Tyler Beike. Pitching today for Trine, number seven, Cam Nagel. Now the starting last for Kalamazoo, leading off the shortstop number three, Cooper Mills. Batting second, the catcher, number nine, Harrison Posett. Batting third, the third baseman, number seven, Ryer Reinhardt. Batting fourth, the second baseman, number 14, David Steckow. Batting fifth, the third baseman, or the first baseman, excuse me, number 23, Robert Newland. Batting sixth, the left fielder, number 10, Tanner Hawkins. Batting seventh, the designated hitter, number 17, Alex Fankel. Batting eighth, the right fielder, number 18, Logan Lockhart. And batting ninth, the center fielder, number 33, Lucas Bolton. Pitching today for Kalamazoo, as we mentioned, number 12, Robert Algren. And get this game underway in just a few moments. We thank you all for tuning in to game one of today's doubleheader between the Trine Thunder and the Kalamazoo Hornets.
second, fifth year, number nine, the catcher, Harrison Pozak. Batting third, sophomore, number seven, the third baseman, Ryer Reinhardt. Batting fourth, junior, number 14, the second baseman, David Steckow. Batting fifth, sophomore, number 23, the first baseman, Robert Newland. Batting sixth. Just about ready to rock here at Woodworth Field and Robert Algren takes the mound for Kalamazoo. The freshman from Garden City, Michigan will make his seventh start of the season. He's got a three and one win-loss record, pitched 27 and two thirds of an inning, giving up 28 hits, 11 earned runs, 10 walks, 20 strikeouts, a 1.37 whip, a 2.41 average against an ERA of 3.58. Been pitching fairly well for this team as of late. Kalamazoo enters 20 and eight overall. They are nine and four in league play. Defeated trying in game one of the series Friday night in seven innings, 15 to two. Led by three home runs from Ryer Reinhardt. As you take a look at the Hornets in the field, they got Algren on the mound, Harrison Pozat behind the plate. Robert Newland at first, David Steckow at second, Ryer Reinhardt at third base. Cooper Mills is the shortstop, the outfield from left to right. Goes Tanner Hawkins, Lucas Bolton, and Logan Lockhart. Luke Burford will lead off for Trine. He's got a 309 average, has 12 RBIs on the year. An on base percentage at 305. That is the most important quality for a leadoff hitter. Luke Burford, Daniel Rumberger, and Dalton Nykirk will lead off for Trine. As it's 1-0-3, first pitch away, time for Hornet baseball. Strike one delivered from Algren to the right-handed Luke Burford. Reinhardt in on the grass at third base. The one's inside for a ball, and it is one and one. Forty-nine degrees, partly cloudy, a little warmer than what we had at softball yesterday. 
comes the 1-1. Swing and a miss on the high fastball. Algren's attacking inside on Burford to start the at-bat. Hangs ahead in the count, one and two. The one-two. Curveball chopped towards middle. Off second base, Mills throws. It is not in time. Burford beats it out with an infield single. Umpires today behind the plate. Sean Schaefer Markle at first base making that call was Kevin Weber at third base, Corey Stewart. One man up, one man on base. For Trine brings up the center fielder, Daniel Rumberger. He's a senior out of Livonia, Michigan. 320 average on the year, a home run, 11 RBIs. Yeah, Matson, as you said, an important hit for him right there. Get on base and get a get a chance to get some runs in early. He didn't have a hit in the first game a couple days ago, but gets one to start the game here. Brumberger showed bunt, pulled it back, and the pitch came in low for ball one. Not a whole lot today around the MIAA in baseball. Alma and Olivet playing a doubleheader today. Adrian is traveling to Worcester for a non-conference game. From the stretch, the one out, Rumberger shows bunts again, squared it up and missed the bunt. So it is strike one. We were supposed to have softball today for Kalamazoo, but because of this game getting moved to today, their doubleheader against Anderson was canceled. They picked up what I would say the win of the season yesterday in game two of their doubleheader against Hope College, beating the Flying Dutch for the first time in 22 years. Yeah. Snap, snapping a 40-game losing streak. Huge win overall for the program. I mean, any team that you can't beat for 20 years and finally picking up a win and a decisive win, really good look for the softball team. 1-1, one, one, bunt laid down. Algren will field it, comfortably flip over for the first out. Rumberger's bunt does his job. Here's Burford in the scoring position. And we'll bring up arguably the best bat in the trying lineup. It's Dalton Nykirk, the senior from Bedford, Indiana. Sports a 296 average with 22 RBIs. Had an RBI on Friday, one of two runs. Batted him for the Thunder, and the first pitch misses low and away. Nice kind of dive by Harrison Pose to get the glove out. When you're a freshman pitcher on the mound, how much do you think that helps to have a guy with as much experience as Pose at behind the plate, essentially calling your pitches as Nykirk looks at strike one? Yeah, I think a lot. I think it instills a little bit of confidence in the young guy on the mound, and you know, it definitely helps him out. A long look at second. Algren set. Here comes the one-one. Curveball drops. Foul. Nykirk got the hands in but didn't square it up. Joel Walton is on deck. Another look, here comes the one-two again. Got him, strike three. Nykirk jackknifed out of there but the fastball caught the inside part of the black and two away, a big strikeout for the freshman. Yeah, Matt says he said two pitches really inside and I think both of them just nicked the strike zone and a huge strikeout to get two outs here. Joel Walton is a junior from Fortville, Indiana with a 330 average. Two home runs, 23 RBIs. Looks at ball one low on and off speed, only wearing one batting glove, something you don't see as much anymore. He leads trying in RBIs with 23 and still has a chance to get one more. There's the 1-0. Line foul over the Thunder dugout. Algren's start follows Jacob Davis, who started game one on Friday, went the complete seven innings. Gave up the two earned runs as Algren will step off. Sun is shining today. It has popped out from behind the clouds. Had a lot of cloud cover yesterday. It's 1-1 one, one lined over the head of Reinhardt. This should bring a run in. 
Nykirk will, or rather, Walton will hold up at first base. And the Thunder take a 1-0 lead here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, batting cleanup and a huge hit down the third base line and brings in a run for Trine. And getting the bats going early will be big for Trine. I mean, didn't score their runs until the fourth inning last game. And taking an early lead in the first inning. Nathan Gilmet, the catcher bats. He's a freshman out of Pendleton, Indiana. 2-9-2 two -two with two home runs and 14 RBIs. This one on the ground. Fairly routine. Mills will field it, flip it to second to end the inning. But the Thunder get one run on two hits. We go to the bottom of the first. one nothing trying here at Woodworth Field. Cam Nagel will start for Trine, making his eighth start of the year. The senior from Noblesville, Indiana, has a two and four win-loss record, 30 and two-thirds of an inning pitched, giving up 51 hits, 28 earned runs, 18 walks, 22 strikeouts, a 2-2-5 whip, 3-7-2 average against an 8-2-2 ERA. He will face Cooper Mills, a senior middle infielder from Commerce Township, Michigan. He's got 19 RBIs on the year. One of the hardest guys to strike out in Division Three baseball. Done that just nine times this year. It'll be a righty on righty matchup. First pitch low and away. Mills has an on base percentage at 466. Very close to being almost guaranteed to get on base one out of every two times he's up. He looks at ball two down and away. Yeah, and as we said earlier, that's exactly what you want from your leadoff hitter. I mean, get on base and. Give you give you the big bats in your order a chance to get some RBIs. And there are two big bats coming up next. 2-0. That misses a little bit down. It's 3-0. As we look at trying in the field, they have Nagel on the mound. Gimmit is behind the plate. 3-0 pitch. That's in for a strike with the fastball. Nykirk sits at first. Tyler Beike is at second. Walton at third. Burford at short. The outfield from left to right is... Cole Temple, Daniel Rumberger has that one lined foul. In right field is Brody Bond. Nagel gets back to a full count. Here comes the 3-2. In a shallow right field and Bond will drift over, make the catch and one away. Harrison Pozak comes up, the fifth-year catcher. And undoubtedly, one of, if not the best in this league. First pitch in for a strike. A 3.55 average, has six home runs and 46 RBIs. Those six bombs are good for tied for fourth in the league. That one on the ground, the first base, fielded by Nykirk. Two up, two down for Nagel. And a great job by Nagel here early. I mean, 
got down 3-0 and, and the leadoff hitter and battled back to a full count and then eventually a pop out and a ground out for the. Yeah. One, one key for trying against this lineup, you have to be able to get early outs because the more your pitchers have to stay in, the deeper you have to go in their bullpen, the more this lineup can get you. Ryan Reinhardt looks at strike one and he terrorized the Thunder on Friday. Three home runs in the game. He's behind 0-1. He shoots that one straight back. Ended up with a total of six RBIs. A solid day at the office for him. In the sixth inning, he had a single to score two runs, and his teammate said, oh, it's only a two-run single. 0-2's in the dirt. Year Reinhardt hits 275, the five home runs total and 23 RBIs. Missed some time early with an injury, took him a little bit to get into a rhythm as he looks at another slider down. And now it feels like he's good to go and he's swinging a hot bat. Yeah, definitely a rough start to the year. I mean, multiple injuries really setting him back and now just starting to look like he did his freshman year here at Kalamazoo. 2 2 foul back in his freshman year. Was an impressive one. Broke multiple records, RBI record, home run record in a single season. Was the MIAA position player of the year. Was the Division3Baseball.com rookie of the year. Was an All-American. And was first team All-MIAA. He follows that one off again. David Steckow would be next. Staying alive here. He's battling. Forcing a long at bat. Mangle delivers 2-2 in the air. Right center drifting back his bond to the wall. It's going to bounce up against it. Unable to really track it. Reinhardt is going to try and stretch this for three. The throw is not in time. He's in standing up. A triple for Ryer Reinhardt. Means runner on third. Two outs for David Steckow. Looked like Bond just couldn't quite track it out in right field. Yeah, he thought he had it. I think that ball just kept drifting and drifting and drifting. I thought it, it might get over the wall, but... A little bit short, maybe warning track, and bounces off for a triple. He went oppo last week for a home run at Adrian. Nearly did there. David Steckow will try and bring him in with two outs. 431 average for the cleanup hitter for the Hornets. First pitch, low ball one. He's got 17 RBIs. That 431 average puts him first in the MIAA. He was first team all league a year ago. 1-0, down and away again. Kalamazoo is playing just their third home game of the year, and they dropped both of their first two against Hope College in games that, you know, you ask anyone, they do not play well. And they're really looking for a bounce-back performance at home, a place they've had so much success over the last few years. As they chase what would be a second straight league championship. 3-0 is the count to Steckow. On the way, down and away. Steckow draws a two-out walk. Now two on, two out for Robert Newland. Yeah, Metson, as you said, those two games against Hope, just two really rough games for the Hornets overall. Honestly, the bats really inconsistent in those two games, and the pitching really not great to follow it up. And they had eight errors in game one. It's hard to win a baseball game with a couple errors, let alone eight errors. Newland has been swinging a hotter bat as of late. Looks at ball low and away. 3.33 with 15 RBIs. I got a feeling we might see the old steel stop coming out here to try and score Reinhardt. Keep an eye on Steckout. As that one down and away, you won't call it if Nagel can't locate. He's now throwing six straight balls. Yeah, no need to try it if you're going to get another walk here, as you said, six in a row. And Newland doesn't really look to be swinging at those. 2-0. He swings at that one, got a piece of it. It's two and one. It's been heavy dose of slider so far from Nagel. Yeah, and a pretty good pitch right there by Nagel to get back on track and try to fight back in this count. Keep an eye on Steckout at first. He does have the ability to steal bases. Two one. That's in for a strike. Well, it looks like a changeup. Steckow has nine stolen bases this year. 
Nolan digs in, righty on righty matchup here. Pitches the bat over his right shoulder. There goes Steckout. 2 2 is on the ground and foul. I was going to say, those last two pitches, he's been really down in the stance, looking like he wants to go every time. And took off, but a foul ball. Tanner Hawkins would be next. He takes the lead. Runners in the corners with two outs. There goes Steckow again. 2-2 is on the ground towards first base. This is not an easy play for Burfer, but he completes it to get Trine out of the inning. The Hornets get a hit. They leave two guys on base. They do not score. We go to the second. It is 1-0 Trine. one nothing trying as we get ready to start the top of the second here at Woodworth Field. It will be the 6-7-8 part of the order for the first time. Cole Temple, the freshman from Yorktown, Indiana, will lead off facing Robert Algren. As he looks to pick up a zero with the Kalamazoo trailing in this game. Algren will consistently work out of the stretch. The first pitch is a curveball that Hit the dirt a little too soon. Temple, that's a 234 average. Has two home runs and 11 RBIs. A total of eight extra base hits. 1-0 is inside, popped into the air. In the shallow right field, Logan Lockhart. Camps makes the catch. One away. Moves to Brody Bond. A sophomore from Mooresville, Indiana. 275, a home run and six RBIs. That's something about trying. They do have extra base power in their lineup. They've got a team OPS at 720. As Bond looks at strike one, a team slicking percentage at 365. It's a little spread out, but they do have guys in their order that can, you know, get a double, a triple. Guys that can leave the park. Oh, one's inside. The 1-1. One, one. Good pitch. A curveball that got a swing and a miss. Bond way out in front of that one. Easton Rhodes, the only lefty in the try and lineup, is on deck. The 1-2. One, hit in a right field. It'll drop down a base hit. As Bond kind of threw his hands out there and pokes it in the right. And it will bring up Easton Rhodes. Senior from Auburn, Indiana. Got one of the higher averages on the team at 349. He's got three home runs and 12 RBIs. Yeah, Mets, and as you said, we're getting deeper and deeper into the trine lineup, and their batting averages are still way up there. And not something that you see every day. In the foul territory, Reinhardt was right up against the fence, and the ball dropped down right next to him. So it's 0-1. Two of the guys with the highest averages are the 8 and 9 hitters. Rhodes at 349 and 
Tyler Beike, the guy next, 375. They say batting average doesn't matter as much anymore, and there's still, I think, you know, still some use out of it. Definitely. You, know, you obviously look at things more like on base percentage OPS now, more, you know, in the modern age of baseball, but batting average still matters. Especially with two numbers at about the 3 5 mark. 1 1, runner goes in the left field right at Tanner Hawkins. Bond will have to retreat. And there are two down. That will bring up the aforementioned Bikey. That 375 average to go with it. He's got a home run and six RBIs. Batting in the nine hole today. He really could be what you define as a second leadoff guy in the lineup when you have numbers like that. Batting in the nine slot. There's strike one with a fastball from Algren. Yeah, and as you said, your leadoff guy, you want to have a good on base percentage, and that's exactly what Bikey has right around. 500. Yeah, 470 for his OBP. And he's got 21 hits. He's been in the lineup pretty consistently. On the ground, that's off of Algren, but he will field and flip the first. Very, very comfortably. 1-3 the put out. Trine does not score. They get a hit. They leave a man. We move to the bottom of the second inning in Kalamazoo where the Hornets trail 1-0. Tanner Hawkins will lead off the bottom of the second inning for Kalamazoo. Hawkins at one point had an average nearly at 600 on the year. That's gone down a bit. His bat's cooled a little bit, but it's still 419 with a home run and 13 RBIs. His 419 average puts him third in the league in that category. He was second team all MIAA a year ago. He looks at ball one. It'll be Hawkins, Alex Fenkel, and Logan Lockhart to face Cam Nagel. 1-0, he went after a high fastball and followed it straight back. You can see he was a little unsure on that pitch. It was a quick late swing on a high fastball. Is that one of those scenarios you're expecting almost to be off speed? As he takes another one for a strike? That, yeah, as you said, he looked a little bit uncomfortable and obviously a little bit of a late swing just for the foul tip. and Not really expecting a fastball in there like you said. One, two in the dirt. It's two and two. Two, two lined right at the shortstop. Burford. Looks like a little backspin on that ball. And it's the first out of the second inning. Brings up the lone lefty in the Hornets lineup. It's Fankel. He's one of those guys who's really seen a jump through his first to second year. As he looks at a ball. Been in the lineup a lot more consistently lately. And he hits 339 with a home run. Swings and misses there. He's got 14 RBIs. A sophomore from West Bloomfield, Michigan. Counts one and one. Nagel kicks the delivery on the ground to short. Takes a hop, but Burford fields it cleanly. The throw is in time. And again, two up, two down quickly. For Cam Nagel. You had a pretty good play there at short. That ball took an awkward hop right before him, but still able to make the play at first. That's what you need out of your shortstop. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Stenkel almost got on, just stole a base, dare I say. Logan Lockhart looks at strike one. Not the technical term stealing a base, but <laughs> I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Fankel is regarded as one of the faster guys in the team, so that's a good job by Burford to get him out as Lockhart looks at ball one. Lockhart's a guy we could see pitch, maybe not maybe not in this game, but certainly in game two. He's pitched really well this year. If that comes, we'll bring you his numbers at the plate this year. As he chops this one the third, we'll tell you about it later. A throw across the diamond is in time from Walton, and the Hornets go one, two, three in the second inning. We go to the third. It's one nothing trying. Getting ready to start the third inning of play. We have a scheduled 18 total innings of baseball to be played at Woodworth Field. Our first doubleheader of the season, which is crazy to say, considering not that many games left on the schedule. Just two more MIAA series for the Hornets. Burford will hit. Top of the order for the Thunder due up. Yeah, the infield single would come in to score. His first time up. First pitch just missed. Looks like it was in the zone, but Jose didn't hold on to it cleanly. One zero -oh, away. In the air to right center, a long run for Lockhart, who will get there and make the catch. Losing his hat in the process. He nearly switched positions with Bolton for a moment. As he ended up in center field, Bolton almost went to right. Yeah, great play right there. Uh, that ball was almost right in between the two, and he had to take a journey to get over to that one. Brings up Rumberger, who had a sacrifice bunt his first time up. He looks at a strike on the curveball. Had some 12 to 6 action on that pitch and dropped right in. Same thing with that one, and it's fouled off 0 2, at least from our vantage point. That's what it looked like. Oh two. I don't know why missing with the slider. Nykirk is next. Comes the one-two. Swing and a miss. And the second strikeout of the ball game for Algren. Heavy dose of off speed on that at bat, and he got Rumberger. Yeah, got Rumberger chasing a little bit outside on that last pitch, but a great strikeout for Algren. Two away for Nykirk, who struck out his first time up. There's another off-speed pitch for a strike. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. His slider and curveball neither look broken right now, neither look to be in the best shape they can be as that one fouled straight back from another one. Hornets will go 9-1-2 in the bottom of this inning. Oh, 
0-2 pose that sets up outside. It's hit the second base. Stekow backhands it. Throw is in time. And the Thunder go 1-2-3 in the third. Can the Hornets get their bats going? We will find out in the bottom of the third. Coming up next. We move to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be the senior center fielder, Lucas Bolton. Nine, one, and two in the Hornet order. Bolton with a 245 average with 21 RBIs, looks at strike one. Kalamazoo today is wearing their home whites. The letters in the front in black. Numbers as Bolton nearly hit. They're in silver coloring with a black outline. Got the black hats with the orange bill and the Hornet logo. Bolton flies this in a fairly deep right center. This is going to be trouble as this will roll all the way to the wall. Bolton will have extra bases. He's at two. He's going to try and turn this into three, and he will do so standing up. A leadoff triple for Bolton. Puts the Hornets in business in the bottom of the third. Yeah, picking up right where he left off in the last game against Trine. And three at bats, two hits, and two RBIs, and picking right back up from that nine slot in the order. It will give the top of the order an opportunity to tie this game up. One of the top offenses, not just in the MIAA, but in the country. Mills looks at a ball. Yeah, not often that Mills is looking at a runner on third when he's up. You need to do some damage. He fouls that off. He's got 19 RBIs this year. Kalamazoo already with two triples today. Their season total is four. So they've got half of that in this game. And one of them from Reinhardt isn't a guy you'd expect to have a triple. Bolton's got speed. You can see that triple coming. But they've been able to put the ball in some tough spots. And they've been out of the box quickly. 2-1 is the count to Mills. Got a fastball in for a strike. Yeah, but as you're saying, I mean, two deep hits at the wall in right field, and that's both their hits yeah. today. That's that's triple ter triple territory for sure for Bolton. But as you said, Reinhardt, pretty surprising. He put on the Jets for that one to get the triple. Three and two is the count to Mills, and a big pitch coming with Posat on deck. Payoff pitch. Hits Mills in the elbow. Or maybe it hit the end of his bat. I think it hit the end of his bat. I thought it hit him in the elbow. I thought it hit him too, but. Must have hit the bat. So an unfortunate break for Mills. I think they might be calling a foul ball there. Some confusion with trying in the field. And Gimmit, or the Gilmet, excuse me, gets some. Squared away, and we will do the 3-2 one more time. Nagel delivers up and in. He will take first base anyway. At bat, number nine, Harrison he draws his 29th walk of the year. <laughs> He's got a pretty good eye. And that eye puts runners at the corners with nobody out for Pozat. 
exactly what the doctor ordered after a uh, slow start to the game the first time through the order. Pozak grounded out his first time up. They go out of the stretch. Drops a slider in for a strike. Reinhardt awaits. Would love to get Reinhardt to the plate in a tie game or Pozak can put a ball in the right spot. Maybe the lead. One nothing trying as they check over on Mills. Seven stolen bases. Certainly is a situation you would put him on the move. Oh one. Fouled off. Two strikes. Do you see them putting Mills on the move here? Maybe, but with Reinhardt, Reinhardt coming up, I mean, giving him a chance with the bases loaded or runners on the corners. Fouled again. Don't risk taking someone off base trying to get another a steal here. You always have to be wary with a runner on third. If a guy takes off, it's unlikely we see a throw down or at a minimum the ball probably gets cut off. To keep holding from scoring. 0-2 again. Shot to six, or short rather. They'll go six, four. Three for a double play. It will bring in a run and tie the game. Always mixed feelings when you get those double plays. They end up scoring a run. But a big double play at that because it clears the bases for trying, even if it's going to tie the game. Yeah, and as you said, for sure, mixed emotions. I mean, you never like seeing a double play, but a double play with an RBI. Not something you see every day. For Poza, it's his 47th RBI in the year. Reinhardt looks at a strike. Each team with one run. Trying with three hits. Kalamazoo with two. Reinhardt chops this to third base. It is foul. Early 0 2 count for Reinhardt. Nagel. Feels like in this game he's either gotten ahead 0-2 or he's been behind 3-0. Reinhardt puts this down the right field line, drifting, foul. Almost in the territory of another triple right there. Would have at least been two if that landed fair. Should Reinhardt reach, it will be stuck out next. Looks at a ball, makes it one and two. And that one on the ground is short. Burford, who's been really good so far in this game, fields it and throws it over in time to end the inning. The Hornets get a triple. They get a run. No more damage done. We go to the fourth, a third of the way through this one, a tie game at one.
Joel Walton will lead off the top of the fourth. We're trying. Quick correction on that pose, that double play. I lost my mind for a second. You don't get an RBI for a double play. So he stays at 46. Algren back out to work from the stretch. First pitch hit high in the air to fairly deep left field. And Hawkins will drift back to about the warning track, but he'll make the catch. That one about as high as the Empire State now Building, but Hawkins Gilbert. makes the catch, and it's a really, really long out on the first pitch of the inning. Yeah, and a good play there by Hawkins. I mean, looking right into the sun on that one as well. And we've seen the sun give outfielders issues in the past here. As Gilmick comes up, he ran into a fielder's choice his first time up. Looks at a strike, and Algren's curveball looking really, really good right, right, right around now. Here comes the 0 1. Not hit hard, it's on the ground. Mills ranges over, throw in time. Two up, two down for Algren as he looks for a quick inning. He's thrown just 38 pitches in this game. And he's one more out away from getting out of the fourth. It's Cole Temple, who is 0 for 1. Comes the bat. There's strike one again with the off speed. Hey, if they're working, he's going to keep throwing them. I mean, he's getting quick outs with it every time, so. A one bounces in the dirt for a ball. Sticking with it, but you think he, he finally goes with the fastball here, Mets, or? I bet you stick with off speed right now. Here comes the one one. And you're correct, they do go fastball. It's inside. Should Temple reach, it would be Bond. 1-1 one, one game in the top of the fourth. Here comes a 2-1. That miss is low. 3-1. Shrine's got the gray uniforms with the camo type of jersey and the gray stripe. They have the letters and numbers in what I think is navy blue outlined in white. They have the navy blue hats with the white tee. 3-1. This is popped into the air in a shallow center field. There's Bolton to make the catch and a quick one, two, three inning for Robert Algren will bring the Hornet bats back up to the plate in a tie game in the bottom of the fourth. David Steckow will lead off for the Hornets in the bottom of the fourth inning. They tied the game in the bottom of the third as we look around the MIAA in the bottom of the fourth right now. Alma leading Olivet. That pitch missed for a ball. Game one of that doubleheader, 3-1 Scots in the fourth. Steckow follows this back. Softball action today in the top of the first inning. 
after that game yet to get underway. Trine and Alma. Pitch in the dirt, 3-1 and one to Steckow, who walked his first time up. It will be Steckow, Newland, and Hawkins in this inning for Kalamazoo. 3-1. Popped in the air, foul and out of play. And the count run full again. Nagel's pitch count up over 60. He's pitched very well through this game. you got to imagine the Trine staff and... Greg Pushkey will let him go longer as that one grounded to third. A long throw across the diamond by Walton is in time. And one up, one down in the fourth. Now yeah, pretty big Robert difference Newland. of pitches between uh, Nagel and Algren. I mean, as you said, the Kalamazoo bats have been having a, a battle at the plate and a longer at bats and trying and running up that pitch count a little bit for Nagel. Nobody struck out for the Hornets yet. It's a matter of getting good contact and getting the ball to drop. As Newland looks at a ball, the two hits they've had have been triples that were driven to the wall by Reinhardt and Bolton, and the Hornets were able to take advantage of the Bolton triple and at least get him across. As Newland looks at a strike. One one, that's a good looking curveball. That drops in for strike two. Yeah. A pretty curveball right there, and Newland just didn't like it. It's a tough spot when it's inside like that on the batter's hands. One two's in the dirt. Trying to infield backed up. Middle infielders playing essentially on the outfield grass. Nagel set. Here comes the two two. On the ground is short, not an mean easy play with Newland speed. The throw is in time by a touch. How about Luke Burford in this game at shortstop? Yeah, he's just making play after play after play right there right now. And helping out his buddy Nagel on the mound. It will mean two outs for Hawkins. Hawkins is 0 for 1 and looks at a ball. That one hit hard on the ground. It'll get by the second baseman, Bikey, in the right field. A two out knock for Hawkins. We'll give Fankel a chance to bat. Fankel looks at a strike. He's 0 for 1 today. Oh, they ground out to guess who Burford. He's behind the count 0 and 1. Chops that one to third. Fielded by Walton. The throw over is in time. The Hornets get a hit. They do not score. We move to the fifth in a 1-1 ball game here at Woodworth Field.
we move to the fifth as we make our way through the middle innings here of a 1-1 ball game between Kalamazoo and Trine. Brody Bond will lead off. He's one for one today, singled in the second inning. Since he singled, Algren has gotten everybody else in the Trine lineup down in a row. First pitch from Algren is hit high and deep, but foul. Crushed that baseball, but yeah. it's a really long strike. Nearly into the territory of a house that's being built over there. Yeah, got a hold of that one for sure. And Algren lucky that that one sailed foul. A one. He went with the changeup, and it was foul tipped into the glove. Comes the 0-2. Bond stays away from the outside slider. Yeah, you can see Pose that set up outside on that one and figured something outside was coming, hopefully to get him chasing, but. He set up outside again. It's a fastball that comes back inside and it's fouled right over our heads. Both pitchers have been really, really good today. Nagel and Algren is here comes the one, two. That drops in for a ball. But the difference in pitch count where's Nagel sits at 70. Algren, if my math is correct, is at 48. The strike percentage is a big thing to do with that as that one is jammed. Not an easy play for Reiner who will have to try and barehand it. He won't have a play. It'll be a bit of a fluky base hit for Bond, but it's his second of the game. And the Thunder get the leadoff man on for the second time tonight. Yeah, and as you said, the difference in pitch count, and I think that right there is really the first time that a trying batter has really battled at the plate and stayed alive and it ends up with a little blooper for a single. Strike percentage is a big region, reason why. Nagel's strike percentage at 61.4 through the 70 pitches. Algren at 71.4 through 49 as he faces the lefty Rhodes. Reinhardt comes in, Rhodes shows bunt, pops it up. Reinhardt will slide and make the catch. That's the one thing you can't do when you lay down a bunt is pop it up. He had a great play by Reinhardt to get there to catch that one. You kind of figure a bunt's coming with no one out and a man on first trying to just advance him to second. Yeah, especially in a game like this with how low scoring it's been, you just try and manufacture your runs. Exactly how they got that run in the first. Yeah, it was a single. It was an infield single by Burford. Then Rumberger bunted him over. That's the first pitch by Bikey is fouled straight back. That ball testing the reflexes of one of the Kalamazoo football quarterbacks, Trey Ritchie, and his defensive lineman friend, Nolan Janiga. Swing and a miss from Bikey. And Ra really attack, attacking inside on this inning. Trine really isn't falling for those outside pitches. It's been a heavy dose of the inside part of the plate. Bond takes the lead at first. Here comes the 0-2 on the ground. Potential for two, and they will just go one with it being a slow roller. Bikey is out, and there are two away. Bond moves up on the fielder's I'll choice. That, that means top of the order. Yeah, and Bond got a pretty good jump from first. I mean, to be able to beat that out to second to avoid the double play. He took an extra step on the lead. Not sure if anybody else picked that up. As Algram will take a second to tie his shoe. Trim will turn the lineup over for the third time today. Burford is one for two. A single and a fly out. Yeah, and having a great day out in the field trying to add that into the batter's box as well. He has scored Trine's lone run. Has an opportunity to give the Thunder the lead back as Algren's pitch just misses inside. Did you almost just break your chair? <laughs> I think I did. He did just break his chair. So we have a free back of a chair that is now broken off of 
Scoop's chair. We'll let you figure that out. I'll take care of the rest of this. 2-0 is the count. Two and zero oh to Burford as here it comes. That's a fastball for a strike. I'm not sure how he's gonna figure this out. If he does, I will be impressed. Maybe he just did. Take a seat. See how that goes for you. We'll get you back on here in just one second. Does it work? Uh, I'm a little scared to test it out. Maybe wait till the inning's over. Two one, low for a ball. Rumberger next. So we have another first. First time a chair has broken mid-broadcast. I know that the folks at home can't see us, but take our word for it. Yeah, I have no idea how that just happened. I think he got it back in there tightly, though. Looks good. As we have time called, a pitch clock violation on the batter. I believe he wasn't in the batter's box in time, which means it's going to be a strike and make the count three and two. You see those in the MLU, that's the first time I've seen a pitch clock violation on a batter at this field. So this is an inning of firsts, and it makes it 3-2. and two. Yeah, and that helps out Auburn a lot. 3-2 on the ground to short. Mills, fields on a hop. Throw is in time. And Algren able to keep the score where it is. Thunder get a hit. They have no runs. Leave one man. We go to the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through. We're going to test out this chair a little bit more and then be back for the bottom of the fifth. We're halfway through here at Woodworth Field. Kalamazoo and Trine tied at one. And Logan Lockhart lines the first pitch. It is not caught, and he nearly would turn that into a base hit, but it'll end up being thrown out at first by Bikey. A little bit of an awkward play. And we'll bring up Bolton, who tripled his first time up. Yeah, I think Bikey said that he caught it and kind of looked over to the ump for confirmation. And the ump said no. Didn't get it. I was with the umpire. I thought it hit the ground. <laughs> Bolton looks at ball one. Update. The chair is working. <laughs> I think I just made it work even better, actually. Back. Completely by accident. There we go. It's good to go. There's a strike from Nagel to Bolton. You have to blame that one on athletic mentors, I think. I guess so. We'll, go, we'll have to tell Joey about that tomorrow morning. Ball one is popped into the air. Foul territory. It will get out of play. Over into the triangle open. Baseball score update, top of the fifth. Olivet comes back to take the lead over Alma, 4-3. That'll be one to keep an eye on with Alma as Bolton flies this in the shallow right field. Bond drifting back, reaching up. He made the catch. Ooh. That ball just hung in the air a little bit as the wind's starting to blow out. Yeah, I almost misjudged that one a little bit. and Barely got the glove up there to get the out. Top of the order up for Kalamazoo. 
Alma's one of the, there's really a divide in the league between the top four and the bottom four in terms of record. And Alma's one of those teams that's in the top four. That's a game to keep an eye on as they try and stay in contention for a league championship. They've still got some games to play compared to everybody else. And as that pitch up and in at Mills and it hit him. Wow. You can hear the try and dugout a little bit unhappy with that call. Yeah, the ball was caught by Gilman and it was way up and in the entire try and field thought there was no way that hit him. He's coming out to argue it is Greg Persky, the 22 year head coach of this program. As most coaches do, he will lose the battle and Mills will reach base. Via the hit by pitch. It's the fourth time he's been hit this year. And a guy who last year was known for being hit, Harrison Pozak comes up. They check over on Mills. Mills takes off. The throw down is not in time. They didn't get the tag in in time and the Hornets get the go-ahead run in the scoring position. Eighth stolen base of the year for Mills. A pretty solid throw from home plate, just a little bit late, as you said, on that tag. And Gilman couldn't quite get it there. 0-1 is the count to Pozak. He flies this in a right field. Bond close to the wall. He reaches up and makes the catch. Pozak gave it a charge, but it's a really long out in the end, and the Hornets cannot capitalize on the runner in scoring position. We go to the six, still 1-1 between Trine and Kalamazoo. We go to the six, and it will be Daniel Rumberger to lead off. Algren back out for the Hornets. Trying to beginning to get some action in their bullpen is it looks like Jack Villarreal beginning to warm up. I think it's a pretty safe bet. We see Nagel out for the sixth inning. Algren draws a swing and a miss. The curveball on the first pitch. Yeah, Nagel's starting to get up there a little bit in the pitch count, but throwing really well here today. A one is inside a non-conference score. Adrian leading Worcester 2-0 in the top of the first inning. Comes the 1-1. One -one. That's a strike with a fastball. One, two. Algren from the stretch. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. One up. One K for Algren in the sixth. At bat, number 11, Dalton Neiter. And he's really been working the inside of the batter's box all day long. And 
Gets another one swinging there. Pitch up and in to Nykirk. One zero is the count. Fastball for a strike. All can continue to work in the stretch. Nykirk zero for two in the game. Looks at a strike with the curveball again. Nykirk struck out against Algren in the first, grounded out in the third, batting here in the sixth. The one two. Popped up, foul and out of play, right over our heads. The trying bats starting to battle here in these last couple of innings. Algren's pitch down count is still comfortably at 67. Nobody throwing for Kalamazoo. Here comes the one two. That's going to be over the head of Steckow in a right. Nykirk just pokes it in a right. A little nickel and dime for a base hit. Now batting number 19, Joel Walter. They really reached out for that one. And as you said, poked it in the shallow right field. Brings up Walton, who really, I think, has the only hard hit ball today for Trino. Is that RBI he got in the first? Pitch just misses. Couldn't catch the outside corner. Trying not a team known for stealing bases as a team this year. They've done it just 28 times. As that pitch is in the dirt. For comparison, Kalamazoo has done it 50 times this year. And once today. 2-0 is the count. Nykirk takes off the pitch's line. It's going to be right at Stecco, and they're going to double up Nykirk. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. The line drive went right back at Stecco, who was coming to cover the stolen base. They pick off Nykirk at first, who was on the move, and it will end the top of the six. Try and get a hit. They do not score. We move to the bottom of the six. 1-1, one, one, Thunder and Hornets. Bottom of the six, and the Hornets still searching for answers against Cam Nagel. And it will be Reinhardt to lead off. He looks at a ball. Reinhardt's one for two, tripled in the first. And that one hits him. And the Hornet dugout 
trying to create some of their own energy. Now batting number 14, David Deckow. They get the leadoff guy on for the second time tonight. And again, another conversation after the hit by pitch. Stackout comes up. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. Shows Bunt, lays it down. That will do the job that was asked of him. Reinhardt will move in a scoring position. Stackout, who has been excellent with the putter this year, moves the runner in a scoring position. Yeah, and as you were saying earlier, a 1-1 game. Getting that bunt down and advancing the runner is a huge deal. With the runs, it's hard to come by as they are today. You try and manufacture them, and now you get new one up. Can new one be the one to break through? He flies this one in a fairly deep right center. That's going to drop. Reinhardt had to hold up, but they bobble it out in right field. He's going to get waved around, and he will score. Robert Newland kicks the door down and gives the Hornets their first lead of the day. Yeah, and Ryer, Ryer wasn't sure if he was going to get down or not, but had to hold up a little bit at second there. And a little bit of bobble in right field. Exactly. Would have been held at third, but couldn't pick it up cleanly out in right field, and he'll send Ryer home. I think Newland was trying for two either way. He, he hit the Jets off of first base. One of the fastest guys on the team allows for Hawkins to come to the plate. Greg Pershke comes out. Are we going to get a pitching change here or just a mound visit? It's an RBI double. Gordon Newland gives the Hornets a 2-1 lead. An update from all of that. The Comets score two more. They just took a 6-3 lead on Alma. That's in the bottom of the fifth of that game. In a rather long mound visit. And I yeah, don't yep. think they're going to make the pitching change here yet. No, they're not going to yet as Sean... Schaefer Markle, the home plate umpire, is going to go break it up. Villarreal is throwing for Trine. As Hawkins comes up with a runner on second and one out. Kalamazoo finally grabs the lead. Now they look to extend it here in the bottom of the sixth. First pitch to Hawkins is a strike. We've been talking pitch counts. Nagels is up to 85. Newland bouncing around at second base. As Hawkins looks at the ball, Newland stealing third isn't a far-fetched idea. He's third in the league in stolen bases. Has that one on the ground to second base. Fielded by Bikey. He won't be able to throw over to third, but he will take care of New or of Hawkins, excuse me. And he's runner on third. Two outs for Fenkel as the Hornets look to extend the lead. Yeah, he thought about it for a minute. Looked over at third for maybe one or two crow hops before just deciding to take that out at first. Newland just a little bit too fast and had a big lead off of second. Fankel is 0 for 2. He has grounded out there short twice. A base hit will make it a two-run game. And he follows that one. Counts 0-1. Here it comes. Chopped the second. Takes a hop, but Bikey fields it. He'll lightly toss over to end the inning. The Hornets can't bring Newland across, but they do take their first lead of the game on the RBI double by Newland. We go to the late innings here in Kalamazoo. Hornets with a 2-1 lead.
Trying will come to bat, trailing for the first time today. Leading off for them and hitting that down the left field line and foul <laughs> as the third base umpire, Corey Stewart, completely ducked out of the way of that. That ball was nearly fair. Nearly fair and nearly took his head off. I mean. Next pitch draws a swing and a miss to Gilmet, who is 0 for 2 today. Ground out and in, into a fielder's choice. Brandon Oprinsky, the Hornet closer, is beginning to warm up. Counts 0 and 2 to Gilmet. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. One up, one K again for Algren. A pretty looking pitch right there. It's his fourth strikeout of the game. Cole Temple will come up. Algren sitting at 74 pitches. He can comfortably, if he can get quick outs, come back out for the eighth. Bunch showed it's pushed foul by Temple. It was flown out twice today. It's not a bad idea if we're trying at that point. You're struggling to get base runners. You're struggling to get runs. You got to try everything you can. I mean, Algren hasn't walked anybody. The Thunder have four hits, all singles. Yeah, just trying to get people on base at this point, honestly, is the biggest need for the Thunder. Pitch inside and could have hit Temple, but he jumped out of the way. Yeah, almost one right there. You almost want your guy to take that, don't you? Yeah. And you need base runners. I mean, as much as you don't want him to get hit, you kind of need someone on first base to try to get something going. 2-1 as the pitch misses. Trine's also got another man throwing. Actually, Nagel's just in the bullpen. The way he's interacting with his fellow pitchers, it looks like he's done. As the 2-1 is lined in the left, the base hit. So they get a base runner. It's Temple. You know, I bet Temple likes that a little bit more than getting drilled with the pitch. It all does the same, and it's Bond who's two for two today. Got two singles. Both of them are short little infield singles. He fouls that one straight back at us. For you and I, for our safety, we're glad there's a backstop. I think that one would come right through the window. Right through the window, and I think right at me. You're telling him to take the hit by pitch, I mean. Prove that you can do it too, huh? Well, I'm not wearing a helmet. I'm wearing a headset. I also haven't played baseball in 10 years, I want to say. Same difference. You're, you're a tough guy, Mitz. I know. I appreciate the compliment. Ball popped up, foul territory. Long run for Posat, and it's going to hit the dugout. Yeah, we lost that one in the ceiling, then. Couldn't even see it for a while. Algren's ahead 0-2 to Bond. Yeah, Bond really the hot bat here today for the Thunder, but in a little bit of a hole. One out in the top of the seventh. Temple rather takes the lead. He takes off. 0 2 is flown to center field. It's shallow. Temple has to take off. Lockhart will not try and throw him out. And again, trying to attempt to steal a base. Ruined by a ball that's caught. So finally, Algren gets Bond out, and there are two down for the lefty Easton Rhodes. Yeah, a team that doesn't do it very often in stealing bases. And Two times they've tried to do it today, and two unfortunate events really, both being caught. Turned one into a double play, I believe. It did in the last inning. It was Nykirk who got picked off there. Algrim will lightly throw over to check on Temple. 
does have four bags swiped this year. He is a guy that you would want on the base pass in this situation. First pitch to the lefty is lined in the right center. It'll get down. This will put Algren in a bit of a pickle here as runners at the corners with two outs and the go ahead run on base for Bikey. And Bikey batting pretty well in the year, just not a large number for the RBI category, but looking to change that here. He's got six RBIs. Is that LMS is going to come out at least to talk to Algren. If not, to, I haven't seen a motion to the dugout or the bullpen, rather. So it looks like he's just going to quickly talk to. Algren will be right back. Big at bat here in the top of the seventh in a 2 1 ball game. It's Tyler Bikey against Robert Algren. First pitch is lined to second. Steckow gets in front of it. He'll flip it to Mills. Algren fired up on the mound. Gets out of the jam. Try and gets two hits. They do not score. We move to the bottom of the seventh. Stretch time in Kalamazoo. Hornets with a 2 1 lead. Logan Lockhart will lead off for Kalamazoo in this inning. There's some defensive substitutions for Trine. First up, it's the new pitcher, Jack Villarreal, the sophomore from Liberty Township, Ohio. Has a 2-0 win-loss record. The lefty has pitched 15, or 14 and one-thirds of an inning. His first pitch to Lockhart, misses for a ball. Get up 16 hits, seven earned runs, four walks, 19 strikeouts, a 1-4-0 whip, a 2-6-7 average against, a 4-40 ERA. That pitch down and in for a ball, and it's 2-0. and Cole Schmidhuber comes into right field for Trine. That's one of the substitutions. I believe we have a sub at catcher as well. 
That misses. It's 3-0. and Three and zero from Villarreal. That's in for a strike. The fastball that caught the top of the zone. That one finds the zone again. Here comes the three two. And he gets him. So Villarreal, much to the dismay of Lockhart. Now batting number 33, Lucas Bolton. Gets the strikeout, comes back from down 3-0 for the first strikeout by a trying pitcher today. Yeah, you can see Lockhart very displeased with the umpire after that one. Brings up Bolton. He looks at a strike. Change up again, missing high. Here comes the 1 1 to Bolton. That's located for a strike, and Bolton hangs his head a little bit. And it counts 1 and 2. It's Bolton, and then he'll be followed by Mills in this inning. Of a 2 1 ball game. 1 2. Down and in the dirt. Makes it 2 and 2. It is 8-3, Olivet in the top of the sixth. And that game, however, almost got the bases loaded. 2-2. Two -two. That's flown in the shallow left, coming in to make the catch is Temple. Yeah, a little bit of a different game over there in Olivet than we have here. Um, they just got two run or three runs, rather. A base clearing double makes it 8-6. Mills comes up with two away. He has walked him and hit by a pitch today. He's officially 0 for 1. Shows bunt, you know, try and bunt for a hit, and he pushed that foul. Here's the 0 1 in the dirt. Oh, that would be next. They got Noah Breton, who is their closer, up and throwing the Thunderdew. There's 1-1. One, one. That's in the dirt. Two one. Remember, game two of this doubleheader is coming up next. The rate we're going, we might get a fairly early start to that. Two one, shot the third, fielded by Walton. The throw over is in time, and the Hornets go one two three against Villarreal in the seventh. We got two innings to go in a two one ball game between Kalamazoo and Trine. Hornets lead.
As we get ready to start the eighth, Kalamazoo will look for a six out save for their closer, Brendan Aprinsky, who in his fifth year has been excellent this year. He started one game, he's got a 1-0 win-loss record, pitched 22 and two-thirds, and then giving up 16 hits, seven earned runs, walked 14 batters, struck out 27, one three two whip, a 2-0-3 average against, and a 2-7-8 earned run average. It's gonna be a heavy dose of slider here for Aprinsky. But he's the right guy for this moment, right? Yeah, throwing your closer in a tight ball game, 2 1, where you really can't give up anything. You know, a big game that you need to win. And we have the top of the order who he will face as well. Prinsky is thrown in many big moments. This is nothing new to him. This is where he shines. Yeah, go to your guy to close out game one and see if Prinsky can get it done. 2 1. Hornets in the top of the eighth. Burford comes up, he's one for three. First pitch, it's a slider and it's high for a ball. Kalamazoo made a defensive substitution. Cam Kelly comes in to play right field for Logan Lockhart. 1-0, slider off the plate for a ball. That's a 2-0. That's a fastball for a strike. It's a good looking pitch after a couple of sliders have started off. 2 1. Well off the plate, and it's 3 and 1. It's the top of the order. Burford, Rumberger, and Nykirk do up for the Thunder. They scored in the top of the first on a single from Walton to give him the lead as here comes a 3 1. Misses. Lead off walk in the eighth for Burford. Galmazu tied in the bottom of the third when Pozak grounded into a double play to score Bolton, and then they took the lead in the bottom of the six as Robert Newland doubled in Ryer Reinhardt. Here comes Rumberger, who's 0 for 2. 0 for 2. He has a sack bunt. As he shows one here. Lunged at it and didn't get it, so it's strike one. He's also struck out twice. No surprise to see the bunt on here. You know, it seems like every single time that we got a runner on first, the uh, next batter is going for the bunt just to try to advance him, get him into scoring position. So one. Pose that setting up down and away. Bunt showed again. He stabbed at it again, and he got the bat back in time, just in time. One one, he shows it again. That time he pulled it back clearly. It's two and one. Reinhardt charging in every single time. And now comes Posat to talk to his closer. Zoo attempting to win game one of the doubleheader and secure a series victory over Trine. They won game one at Trine on Friday, 15-2 in seven innings. This game a completely different story. It's 2-1 in the top of the eighth with the time run on first and nobody out. Yeah, that's as you said. I mean, 12 runs through three innings in the first game against Trine, but only two through seven so far here. Runs very hard to come by in this game. 2 1. Bunch showed. It's popped in the air towards first. Aprinsky will field it and take the out. And Rumberger again advances the runner to second on the sacrifice bunt. At bat, number 11, Dalton Nykirk. Brings up Nykirk. Prinsky continuing to work out of the stretch. First pitch to Nykirk, slider strike. Oh, 
Hornets have Owen Schill up and throwing, the freshman from Oxford, Michigan. Swing and a miss on a slider. It's 0-2 to Nykirk, who's one for three today, singled in the sixth. Here comes the 0-2. Up and in. Moves it to one and two. Shell picked up his first career save last week against Adrian and what was a serious clincher for the Hornets. That was a big series win over Adrian. They try to pick over at fur or at second rather and Furford in safely. The one, two. Swing and a miss. Crucial strikeout for Aprinsky. And there are two down for Walton. Setting up very similar to the first inning for Trine. The difference is how they got the runner on so far in yeah. the method of strikeout. And just two great pitches right there by Aprinsky to end that at bat. Got him swinging both times. Walton has the lone RBI today. He lays off the slider. And as you said, it's been a heavy dose of slider. And they are going to go ahead and put Walton on. An intentional walk. And they will go on to Preston Heshen, or Henshin, rather, excuse me. Who came in in the bottom of the seventh to catch, and he will hit now and look at a strike. Henshin is a junior out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, a 139 average with three RBIs. That pitch missing just low. It's one and one. Mike Ott and Kalamazoo electing to put the go-ahead run on base to set up a force at any play and also not have to face Walton, who's driven in Trine's only run. There's a strike, and it's one and two. Temple would be next if Henshin can figure out a Prinsky. The one-two. Swing and a miss! Who else would you want than Brendan Oprinsky in the big moments? And he will smoothly stroll back to the dugout after getting out of the jam to keep the lead in favor of Kalamazoo. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Hornet bats hope this is the final time they bat. They want to add some insurance first, leading 2-1. Bottom of the eighth, the Hornets will have their big bats to hit for what they hope is the final time in this game, leading it 2-1 as Aprinsky got another zero for the Hornets. Posat in the game is 0 for 3. He did grind into a double play that led to the tying run. And right into the thick of the Hornets batting lineup. And 
as you said, hoping to add some insurance here. He's facing Villarreal, who drops in a strike. In a day where runs have been really hard to come by, I mean, just adding one gives you a lot of, uh, a, a lot better feeling. It's 0-2 to Povzat. Trying in the ninth, we'll have Temple to the leadoff. He'll be followed as that one flied high in the shallow left. Sun's not going to make this an easy play, but it is caught by Burford. They will have Schmidt Huber to follow. As Reinhardt comes up, he's one for two. He's tripled, been hit by a pitch, and scored. The go-ahead run. Reinhardt looks at a strike. Here comes the 0-1. Reinhardt grinds this to third. It's a fair ball. It takes a hop on Walton, and Reinhardt will reach. It'll be an infield single for Reinhardt. And we're going to get a pinch runner for Reinhardt as Steckow pops this in the foul territory, running a long way, sliding and unable to make the catch. With Schmidt Huber. Aid pricing in the pinch run for Reinhardt. Thresham was almost a mainstay in the lineup at the beginning of the year when Reinhardt was out. Now used as a runner in this situation. Well, one uh, stack out was a check over. Pricing has two stolen bases on the year. You think we see a move at some point? Not going to happen as the ball is chopped to stack out. There you go, six, four. The throwback is in time. A double play and a great one as Burford continuing to be phenomenal in the field today. And trying. Puts up a zero. Hornets need three more outs. We go to the ninth. They lead it 2 1. Three more outs, and the Hornets will get win number 21 on the season. In the bottom of the seventh, Olivet still leading Alma, 8-6. And 
And Saprinsky back out to face Temple, who's going to try and bunt for a hit. It's foul. It'll be Cole Temple, followed by Cole Schmidhuber, then Easton Rhodes. Numbers 4, 3, and 2 in terms of roster numbers. He looks at a ball, and the order it's 6, 7, 8. Temple is one for three today. One, one. Just missing low with the slider. Yeah, not exactly the part of the order you want up if you're trying here, but as we said earlier, the, the back end of their lineup is still hitting really well in their percentages. 2-1. Popped up, shallow center field. This could be a tough play. Bolton dives, can't make the catch. They're going to try and take second. The throw there is not in time. Temple gets a leadoff double. And the Thunder get the tying run to second base. A little blooper. And Bolton couldn't quite come up with it diving. It brings up Schmidt Huber. Yeah, great recognition there by Temple. I mean, realizing both the shortstop and second baseman both ran into the outfield to try to get there, and no one was there to cover second. So they'll take the double and uh, what exactly what you need if you're trying to start the inning. Schmidt Huber is a sophomore from Brighton, Colorado, a 164 average with eight RBIs. Should the Hornets need to bat in the ninth? They'd have Newland, Hawkins, and Fenkel. They hope they don't need to. Pricing comes in at third. Newland in as well. They trick, pick off, and they got him! What a move by Aprinsky, and Mills right there to apply the tag. Wow. And the complexion of this inning changes in an instant. Trying goes from the tying run on second base and nobody out to nobody on and one out. What a move by Oprinsky. We've seen that over the years. He's got one of the best as he throws ball one to Schmidt Huber and now probably the entire strategy for the Thunder changing as well. He could have seen a bunt there. Now the only bunt would be for a hit, and you got to swing away now, you'd think. Looks at a ball. Prinsky still has to locate. Yeah, just back to trying to get someone on base. I mean, a huge leadoff double to start. Wiped away. Wiped away by Oprinsky. Here's the 2-0 from the windup. Fastball in for a strike. Two one as the infield backs up as well. Here comes a two one, chopped foul by Schmidt Huber. The two two, up and in, well, dropped in rather, but count is full with Rhodes next. Three, two, on the ground is short. Mills, gloves, comfortably throws over, and there are two away. And that means Easton Rhodes will be the last. Hope for trying, and the Hornets are one out away from their first victory on this field this season. Now batting number two, Easton Rhodes. I mean, Rhodes is hitting pretty well in the year and has a couple of home runs to go along with it, so he's definitely capable. Out comes Mike Ott to talk to the infield with two away in the ninth.
Easton Rhodes will come to bat. The first pitch from Aprinsky to the lefty way outside for a ball. Rhodes is one for three. Singled back in the seventh inning. Hornets one out away. 1-0 is in the dirt. Should Rhodes re reach, Feike will be next. Two zero, just misses outside, and it's three and zero. Two roads, another guy with just the one batting glove. Three zero, that hits as Rhodes maybe thought he had ball four, and he'll turn around, and head back to the batter's box. Three one. Swing and a miss. He works back to the full count. And the Hornets need one more pitch. Yeah, and just like that, he thought he has thought he had his base and walking. Right back to full for a Prinsky. 3-2. In the air to left. Hawkins getting under it. Makes the catch. And the Hornets have finally won a game on this field. As Trine cannot get a rally going in the ninth. In a game where the bats were quiet, Kalamazoo grinds it out with their pitching staff to pick up a victory by 2-1, the final score. As we look at the RBIs today, just one for Kalamazoo. It was Robert Newland, Reinhardt, and Lucas Bolton scored the runs. Multi-hit games for just Reinhardt for Kalamazoo. Trines' lone RBI came from Joel Walden. They had multi-hit games from Cole Temple and Brody Bond. The winning pitcher for the Hornets, Robert Algren, who was phenomenal today. Got to quality start, seven innings. You know, seven hits, one earned run, no walks, struck out four. Brendan Oprinsky comes in to get the save. Two innings in relief, gave up just the one hit. Walked a couple and struck out two as well. The losing pitcher for Trine, Cam Nagel, he was really good today too. Six innings, four hits, two earned runs, two walks, no strikeouts. Jack Villarreal in relief, pitched two innings. Gave up one hit, no runs, no walks, and one strikeout. This is just one of those games that the older baseball fans are going to love. A 2-1 pitcher's duel start to finish. Not a lot of runs and move pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, it's it's rough if you're Nagel. He threw a really good game. I mean, he only had four hits and is going to get a loss in the category. So That's how it goes sometimes, unfortunately, for Cam Nagel. However, fortunately for Kalamazoo, they get the win. They move to 21-8 and eight on the year. They're now 10-4. In league play, now sitting a game and a half back of first place. Trine drops to 10 and 21. They are 2 and 12 in league play. We're going to wrap up our broadcast of game one. Remind you, game two will be starting in about 30 minutes. We invite you to stay tuned for that one as Kalamazoo looks to go for the sweep in the series finale against Trine. Uh, wrapping us up here from Woodworth Field one more time. My name is Zach Metz. Not next to me. Dawson Scoopin, thanks for joining me. As always, your final line score today, Kalamazoo with two runs on five hits, no errors. Trine, one run, eight hit, no errors. Thank you, everyone, and stay tuned for game two coming up next.